All right, you're listening to 91.5 WUML Lowell. The program is Blues Deluxe. And it's my honor and pleasure to have Katie Henry with me today. Hello, Katie. Hey, John. Thanks for having me on here. You're welcome. It's great to have you on. I mean, you have a, a short history, but pretty memorable things you've done in the past few years since your first record. Yeah, no, it's been kind of a whirlwind of just getting in the studio for the first time and just seeing how that process unfolded and how so many things have kind of just like I just follow where the music takes me, really. And yeah. it's it's taken me to pretty incredible places. So you're a multi instrumentalist, not playing one mu instrument. You play a few. Uh, yeah, I mean, I grew up playing the piano, so that's like my first love, and I still think of that as like my main instrument, but I did uh, pick up guitar later on, and um, yeah, that, those are my two main instruments, though. And you become one hell of a great guitar player from what I can hear on the records. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, first record, when it came out, that was, you did that by yourself, right? That was self-produced by you? Uh, it wasn't produced by me, but that was self-released. Self-released, um, right. Yeah. Uh, you want to... Tell me about it a little bit. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, so I was writing music, um, and I was just looking for a place to record a few songs, and I got a recommendation to check out this studio in New Jersey, which was actually coincidentally near where I grew up, um, and I was at in New York City at the time. And um, yeah, when I went in there, I had such a great time recording the first five songs that the producer was like, oh, why don't you try five more and then you'll have an album. And that was just like such a wild experience because it, like I was saying before, it just kind of naturally unfolded and felt like um, it was just like in alignment where I just was ready to record an album while I still felt not ready at the same time because it was such a new experience for me. But I definitely grew a lot from that whole experience. And when the album was released, it just um, resonated with a lot of people and it got recognition at the Blues Blast Awards. And um, yeah, it just was like, I, I'm gonna dive further into this. Um, it just kept feeling like I was getting signs to keep going. So. I owe a lot to that that first album for kind of pointing me in the direction. Well, let me let me dig back a little further. When you were growing up, what kind of music were you listening to? What what types of things did you hear on the radio other than blues? How's that? <laughs> well, it is uh, interesting that I grew up um, right like you know hyper pop, uh, Britney Spears era, like as a young kid. So I was listening to like a lot of like pop um, stuff, but like because that's what was being played all the time, but I also, um, I, I just think back to all the CDs I had, like I had like a Faith Hill CD that I sang along to all the time. I had a Celine Dion CD, um, just a lot of great vocalists that I Hope You Dance, I think Leanne Rimes does that. I would sing that as a kid all the time. So I was always like singing along to like a lot of um, like Stuff CD. that was on the radio at the time, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then uh, my parents are huge music lovers and they are always going to see the like local uh, bands and, and showing support. So they would take me to see um, a lot of bands that played, yeah, a lot of like classic rock hits. There was Grateful Dead songs in there. There were um, like country, like outlaw country songs. <laughs> Wow. Uh, <laughs> like yeah just the whole spectrum but really that's good but that's good you you probably can hear i think i can hear some of that influence in in the music that you do too yeah so it's just interesting um uh, i think i'm i tune into like the lyrics and the storytelling um because that's definitely a, a thread in all of the music i love but yeah i mean all of that uh meshed together and i think uh the I always cite like Dark Star Orchestra was this cover band for the Grateful Dead and I saw them do Hurts Me Too. And that was when I just felt like I need to do this. Um, or like I need to express this song and I need to sing it. And that was kind of the the real like awareness where I was like, oh, the foundation of all of this is blues. And um, so when I when did the blues <laughs> come into this all? When did you actually start digging into blues music 
Yeah, like not until I was maybe like 19. Um, like after that hurts me too. I think that's when I discovered that song and, and I sang it at an open mic. And then I just kept diving deeper, deeper and deeper into it, right? Yeah, yeah. But I also like just loved um, like 50s rock and roll. Like, uh, I yeah. remember, yeah, I had a Buddy Holly. <laughs> I loved Buddy Holly as a kid. Um, and like Little Richard, obviously. And the, yeah, just all of that. Just... People say you have a John Lee Hooker vibe in the way you, you play or sing. Yeah, 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 and I, I love. Tell that me, too. tell me about John Lee Hooker. How how you got introduced to him? If you did, um, well, I actually am a huge Bonnie Raitt fan, um, and I love the times that they worked together. But um, I think just like that. Um, oh, and also like one bourbon, one scotch, one beer I had heard. And then I was like, oh, right. Johnny Hooker does that song. And I love, I want to cover that song one day. But um, yeah, it was more just like I had recognized his name. And then when I, um, I just kept listening more and more to him. And um, yeah, just, I was listening to Albert Collins the other day. And that's, that's where it all that's where it all started. It all started. <laughs> I'm going to fast forward to 2021, 2022 during COVID. You right. signed, you were, you were able to sign with a, a label, Roof Records. Yeah, the timing of that was pretty serendipitous for my path for sure. <laughs> tell me, tell me about how Thomas Roof got a hold of you, how you, how you connected with them. Um, I was playing a lot after that uh, first album was released in 2019 and um, Rick Lusher, who knew um, Ben Elliott at Showplace Studios where I recorded, was a huge um, advocate and believer in me and he um, like recommended me and I also had a lot of uh, other just connections I had made throughout that year, like a, a radio DJ like yourself was very like, you know, supportive and wanted to put in a good word. So I just feel like the combination of people who reached out to Thomas is what made him say, oh, this is this is worth checking out. And um, yeah, he got on the last plane flight or the plane flight, the last flight um, before everything shut down uh, right when the pandemic was hitting. So he came to a show that I had on like March 14th. 2020. So it was even amazing that that venue was still open, um, that I played, that he saw me at. But um, yeah, I was very grateful to meet him when I did. And then he uh, did he offer you a, a a recording deal or how did that happen? How did that work out? Well, he loved the show that he came to. And then him and I talked and yeah, I just think that he saw something and and we've had a good, you know, and that was like, when was that? Yeah, 2020. So I we didn't really get into like action with it because of the pandemic was so like right. disorienting. Right. Um, but it was still like, we were still in touch with each other, but it didn't actually become like official, I would say until 2021. And that's when the discussion for the, my next album was being, um, was like on the table. So it kind of happened at the same time of like preparing for that album and making the record deal official. And then the year later, 2022, a little bit post COVID, you went on the blues caravan <laughs> review. You were in a blues caravan <laughs> review. Yeah. I like how you're saying sort of post COVID cause we were definitely still wearing masks on the plane and I still had to have like the, you know, verification that I was um, vaccinated to travel uh, internationally. So like that was definitely a uh, wild to be coming out of the pandemic and then playing in Europe for the first time. And actually that was the first time I traveled uh, out of the country. So it was like such a really um, eye opening experience for me. Good or bad? Uh, good, just very like adventurous and kind of like, yeah, let's see what happens, you know? <laughs> So you, you were paired with two other artists from Roof, Will Jacobs and Halia Vol Volt. What, what was that, that like to be with them? 
Oh, that was fun. You know, like I, it was just good to connect with, um, you know, peers who love the same music that I do and, and just kind of know what living on the road is like. I mean, that was kind of the first real experiences I was having like on the road uh, for a long period of time. And I know like Galia had done a lot of tours before that. So she was more experienced and she was just like very like, um, yeah, just looking out for me. And I feel like we we developed a friendship through the tour and Will, it's it's funny how he came on board, but he, yeah, he lives in Berlin, even though he's from Chicago, but yeah, he's a really talented guitar player. So it's great. It, the three of you worked out well together. Yeah, thanks. And you learned, yeah. you learned from that, didn't you? When you were over there with them. Yeah, and you just are like, everybody wants to put on a good show and we're all doing that together. And it's just like letting a spotlight shine on each of our sets and then all coming together in the end. Like it is a really good way to um, learn from others while like getting out there and reaching, being on new stages, reaching new audiences. And um, yeah, uh, I need to reach out to them now, now that we're talking about it, it's been a minute. And then you, you continued in Europe for a little while after that to support your record, right? Um, well, there was actually three legs of that uh, Blues Caravan tour in 2022. So I went over there three times um, and I so toured. So you're a pro now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so funny. Yeah, the first time I went, I was like, oh no, I can't, I don't know what any of these signs mean. I'm not like, used to being in a foreign country and then yeah by the third time i was like oh i got this i, <laughs> I know yeah, where you're go a pro. The yeah you're a pro now <laughs> i know where the baggage claim is okay <laughs> um but yeah um there was three times that year and then last year 2023 are we caught up to 2023 almost <laughs> yep i'm gonna uh segue into yeah I, I did get to go to europe last year for um a few shows that I had in, well, I had one show in Croatia and that was amazing and beautiful and pinch me moment. And then I uh, toured, or I sat in with a, he's like an English rocker, uh, Chrissy Matthews uh, and his band for a few shows. So um, it, that was my first time kind of like putting together my own string of dates. And oh, I played another festival, but with a pickup band. So I didn't get to like play with like my own band for the whole time, but it was still just a good way for me to get back out there. And um, I'm, I'm right now I'm planning to get back out there with my own band for next year, because that will be like, you know, my first official tour in Europe without um, it being like the Blues Caravan or a situation that I'm sitting, I'm doing a lot of sit-ins. So that's like going to be really cool when that happens. I've seen some photos of you with Bernard Allison. Have you toured with him at all? Yeah, that was how I kicked off of the year. Uh, I got to be on the 30 years of Roof Records tour. Um, and that was like three weeks, uh, right in January into February. And that was really fun. I never wanted that to end. What was that was this year, right? Was it? This yeah. Year? yeah. Yeah, that was this year. Who else was there with you on that tour, the 30th anniversary? Ali Venable uh, was the third yeah. artist. Yeah. So. So it's it the awesome. three of you, you, Bernard, and Allie. Yep. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was incredible to be on stage with them and get to hear them battle it out every night on their guitar. Uh, they ended like this song. Uh, it was going down and they would just be shredding on the guitar. And it was such a cool like learning experience for me. I focused more on the keys. Uh, on that tour, but I got to, um, I was like the opening set and I got to like really feel like the audience when they're first coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after all of our sets, then I got to go on at the, for the last three songs, similar to the format of the Blues Caravan show. And then just to feel the, the contrast of the energy in the room at the end of the show, it was just, it was just incredible. Are they going to release that at all? The thirtieth anniversary. I I thought there was they were thinking about putting something out. Uh, I know that there is a possibility, but I don't know any details around that. Yeah. 
And then February of this year, you released another record. Yep, my third album. Get going. And they're all on they're all on roof. That's good. Uh yeah, I will this all the first one was self-released, but then right. yeah, the all the, the last three have been on roof. Yeah. So tell me about the new one. When did you write it? Well, you, you you're a busy girl out there all the time. <laughs> Tour in Europe and and doing the caravan. When do you have? When did you have time to write another record? <laughs> oh my gosh! You, you like uh, that question, don't you? I do. Yeah, you're just. Uh, I feel acknowledged. <laughs> but um, I think that you know, there's certain times where songs just need to come out, and thankfully, I think yeah, I really sometimes take for granted how much I use my voice memos on my phone to just capture that, um, those spontaneous ideas, like melodic or lyric ideas that come to me. So I, when I was preparing for this, I was just going through a lot of those ideas and seeing which ones um, I felt were the strongest. But I mean, I was writing up until, you know, the studio date, just finishing some lyrics, finishing some lines. Um, working under pressure is not enjoyable, but effective for sure. And um, I feel like this album, even though I, it kind of like came up quick, it was also, I also have this like instinctual feeling of it's time for me to like share new music. Um, it's almost like my albums and our chapters in my life. And I get this sense of like, okay, this chapter needs to be captured and is like ready to be. And I think that um, like the summer is when I, when the plans for it started to come together. But um, yeah, I recorded it in Germany with Bernard's band in November. So. Um, wow. Yeah. You got Bernard's <laughs> band behind you. That's great. I yeah. didn't know that. I didn't realize that. Yeah, no, that's, it was, incredible because I was going through some transitions with my own uh, band lineup and and they were and he was also just like I I think oh he saw me on the blues caravan and just was like oh I I think he just saw that there was other things that I could lean into that he wanted to help bring out in me um and I do look at Bernard as a mentor um because he's just genuinely like oh I see something and I want to help bring that out and show you that you could do things that you don't even think you can do. And that was really nice to have. And he was very just supportive um, because we had shot that uh, promo video for the tour in July when I was there for my other shows. Part of that time out there was to shoot the video together. And when we had a day off, um, we just demoed a few songs together and then that's when it was like oh if we just record like eight more songs then we, we could have the album and and having it for the tour would be great so it just all started to like take root uh in the summer and then over the fall into november when it was recorded just unfolded so and then it was the holidays and then in january i was doing the tour so it all happened when the tour was ending i was like oh my gosh that was that was wild. That was such a ride. And I just learned so much. And just like any experience like that, you just realize you come out the other side, a different person who got to like have these deep experiences. And um, it's just going to like play into my next work. Or I, I think of it as like that step is going to lead to the next one. And next just, chapter, as you call yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yep. All right. Here's my next question. You, you're a multi-instrumentalist. Your, your primary is keyboard. During a show, how often are you playing keyboard and how often are you on guitar? Uh, I think it's pretty even, actually. I would, yeah, I would say I play like a pretty equal amount on both. I remember a guy named Lucky Peterson that I used to see who passed away. He used to play keyboard half the night and guitar the, the other half of the night. That's why I asked the question to see when wh when you do and how you play. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think of too how 
I know the Grateful Dead did like a acoustic set for one of, and then the electric set. And yeah. sometimes I think how cool that would be. Yeah. You can mix it up. <laughs> yeah. Cause like the more uh, like singer songwriter stuff side of what I do, I could, I would love to play that acoustic, some songs in an acoustic. Uh, you should, you should. Yeah. you should. All right. I'm going to do it. <laughs> So the, the, this next chapter is called Get Going. Tell me about Get Going. What made you decide that was the next chapter, your musical chapter for you? Um, I think it, I think it mostly just came from this, I need to move forward in my life, no matter what that means. And I know that, you know, there's people and relationships and seasons of life that mean so much to you that it's hard to let it go when they pass. Um, but I felt like I was in a season of my life where I was like, no, this, this really needs to pass. Um, otherwise I can't, otherwise, you know, what else is going to happen? I, I can't keep going on like this because it's not actually leading to, um, where I want to go. So I feel like get going is just my way of, oh, I, I actually, for me, it has two meanings of it's telling me to get going, like, um, you know, like no slacking and just keep keep your eye on on the work and get going on it. But it also has this message to anybody who is um, like slowing you down and or just a relationship or situation that isn't like in your best interest anymore. Just saying to that, you got to get going. And um, well, getting yeah. getting to play overseas, not many people can do that. You you know you you lucked out, and you were getting going. I was getting going. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look around you at some of the, some of the people that you know locally that aren't doing that and aren't able to do that. That that's something that you you should be proud of that you've been able to get over there and do that, and then all the collaborations with some of these artists that you just talked about. Thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, you just talked about how Bernard Allison has helped mentor you with some of the, your music based on what he's heard. That's that's great when you think about that. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a really special special connection, and I definitely am just. I feel like I found a musical family, and and that I'm forever grateful for. For sure. So I'm going to ask you a local question. You're from New Jersey, correct? Are you still from New Jersey? You still live in New Jersey? Uh, I'm currently in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. But I am from North New Jersey, like Sussex County. Every Everybody that I interview, I ask them about the local blues scene, wherever they are. Tell me about it. Tell me about the local blues scene. Do you get to play the local blues scene at all? Or you're out, you go outside of this, uh, Philadelphia or to other places? Uh, in Philly, there's a place called the Twisted Tail, and that has a nice uh, blues jam every week. And I've played there a few times. And uh, Mikey Jr. I don't know. I know who he is. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's in Philly, and he is involved in the open mic. And actually, one of the first times um, I went there, or not one of the first times, but the first time in a while. I was coincidentally there the same night Laura Chavez was in town playing with Vanessa and she yeah. just was like randomly like, oh, I'm going to go out to this jam. And I had never met Laura, even though we were on the same bill once and I've crossed paths with her, but I never actually got to meet her. So then I'm just like, oh, I'm going to go go to this jam randomly. And I couldn't believe the odds that she she was there. And that was when I got to meet her. I have history with her, by the way. Oh, cool. <laughs> she came and played on my show when she was 21 years old. I didn't know anything about her. As soon as she left, I said to her, I can't imagine what you're going to be like in five years. Yeah, I could. I could imagine. <laughs> wow. And that was 2003. She came and played with uh, a local band from San Jose, California. She was playing in and, uh, she blew us all away. I mean, at, at 21, she killed, she just killed us. I, I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. And then, and then 
four or five years later, actually less than that, she was playing in Candy Kane's band and she was writing music. She was, you know, producing with, with Candy on records. And I was, I've just blown away. It was like, I can't believe it. Yeah. And, she's incredible. Yeah. And I, last time I talked to her, I was, we were laughing about all of that when she was, <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you a little secret. We were trading bootleg music together across the country when Napster was around. Oh, that's funny. And that's how I found out about her. She says to she said to me, she goes, she goes, I have a local blues band. If we ever come east, would you like, can we come and play on your show? And I go, sure you can. But I had never heard anything that she had done. She shows up. I meet her. She comes in the studio and she just kills it. And I'm look, I'm looking at her and I'm just shaking my head. Oh my God, where'd you come from? <laughs> and then after that, I looked at her and I said, I can't imagine what you're going to be like in five years. I said, you're great now. You're going to be even better. Yeah. And so, now, now it's been more than five years. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah. But yeah, she's, She's something else. She was something else back then, and she's even more something else now. I mean, look, she won, she yeah. won the Blues Guitar Award, first woman ever. Yeah. This year. Yeah, I feel like, and I told her when I saw her, I was like, I feel like I see so many pictures, and you're in so many of them, like, and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's Laura again, and she says, yeah, she's always just involved in so many projects, and she's just, humble. She does. She's yeah. she's quiet. Doesn't want to yeah. get involved, and. And yeah. I interviewed her once. She didn't want to do it, right? Because <laughs> she's not like that. Yeah. And the more she's been out and traveling the world and, and playing with all, she plays with Nikki Hill. She plays with everybody. Yeah. Vanessa, you name it. So now she'll do an interview because she's got to get used to doing these things because she's become popular. Yeah. That's just a great example of just somebody who's... Yeah has their nose to the grind and she just does what she does and, and you're doing the same thing though you're doing the same thing thanks <laughs> well think about it she connected do you know how she got into candy's band sue foley and debbie davies at uh asked uh said to candy kane we know this guitar player that might fit your band that was it Wow. And she'd been going ever since. But yeah, it's that, that word of mouth and just people. Uh... Well, just think about it. She doesn't sing, but she's played guitar in just about every band mm -hmm. you ever. I mean, there's so many bands she's part of. Mm -hmm. She found a way after Candy passed away to continue and, and she's done even better now, <laughs> even yeah. without fronting a band. Think about it. Yeah, she's incredible. I'm going to tell yeah. her that we were we were uh, talking about how much we admire her today. <laughs> yeah, tell her. She knows yeah. who I am. So anyway, tell me some more about the new record. Tell me, tell me a favorite song <laughs> that you, you like on the new record. Um... I think uh, Lion's Den is one that stands out for me. I just, when I was on the tour, they played that song before I went out on stage and it just got me in such a good mindset before performing. Um, and I just like the, like the chorus that's like, I walked out, I walked back in, I had to find a place to begin again. Um, it just reminds me like I'm always like starting a new in the moment that I'm creating something. And um, yeah, I just, it puts me in a good mindset when I listen to that one. Good. And yeah, I enjoy playing it too, obviously. <laughs> Tell me about supporting the new record. You're gonna be touring, right? Uh, yeah, I've played some cool shows over the past uh, month. I played uh, Jimmy's Jazz and Blues in Portsmouth, New yep. Hampshire. Man, that place is great. Um, and yeah, I've been playing <clears throat> not a full. I'm, I have uh, some good shows coming up. I don't think I'm going to be in New England though. I 
Well, next time you're in New England, we're going to have to get you to come in and play on the show, my show. Oh, I would love that. Um, yeah, you, there's a... You're traveling around the Mid-Atlantic, I saw, on your website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some Maryland shows. I just right. played um, in Maryland this past weekend. But I, Elkton Music Hall is a new venue I'm playing in, in uh, May. And um, in the summer, I'm going to be going to Florida for the first time, which is exciting. And plans are still coming together for the rest of the year. Some announcements soon. But um, yeah, I'm just plugging away. Uh, any Europe? Any tours overseas? There's a show that I might play in Germany, but I haven't formally like uh, confirmed or announced that, so I'm not gonna talk too much more on it. But um, I mentioned I played last summer in uh, Croatia and there was a crazy rainstorm the day I was supposed to play. So they had to like move me to a different day, but luckily I was staying there for the weekend. So I was able to move it and then the time schedule got so messed up that day so long story short i only ended up playing like a 40 minute set and um when the set ended the promoter said we need to have you back next year and um i'm kind of finalizing that but i in in terms of playing other shows while i'm out there but it's also looking like i will probably be going and doing that at the end of july um here's another i'm playing Go ahead. The Midwest shows actually in, in August. There's another question I ask everyone that travels. Where's your favorite place since you've traveled overseas? Of all the places you've been overseas, where's, your, where's the favorite place for you to go? Uh, that's a really hard one because there's, there's so many different reasons for each place. But when I am asked that, I always can't yeah i always want to bring up uh austria because i was just overwhelmed with like how beautiful it was and they're like and when i realized the sound of music was filmed there i was like oh that makes so much sense um we went to vienna and that was just such a happy place and it was also in the springtime so there was like all these flowers blooming everywhere and um i think what <clears throat> what also affects my answer here are like places where i have a day off because those are the days i actually get to really explore the area yeah and i and that's i really got to do that um in austria so it that really stands out to me and but also i just mentioned croatia i mean i had never been in that region of the world uh and just the water was so clear it was right near um I haven't been to or played in Italy yet, but Croatia is very near to Italy. And I think a lot of people agree that that's one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful place in the world is that whole area. So um, that, that's great. You you do have yeah. one then. <laughs> What'd you say? You do have one, a special one that you like. Croatia. Yeah. Too. yeah. They just, that's what like stands out. But then the longer I think about it, I'm like, oh, but there was this. You know, Paris was, I always wanted to go to Paris and that was exciting. And so there's a lot of good memories that pop up. Most people say France. When I've asked that question of other musicians, yeah. they say France for some reason. Yeah. I didn't get to spend too much time there, but I was just so glad. The last uh, stop on the 30 years tour was in Paris. And um, it just seems like, and I don't know if it's because it's a, a kind of place that you think about going to. And then when you're actually there, I think like the Eiffel Tower is so popular and recognizable. So then when you're in Paris, it's like, oh, my God, like this is really, really happening. And yeah, that's, I'm that's actually here. I'm actually yeah. here, right? Yes, that's how I felt the whole time. <laughs> so where do you see yourself in the next two to five years? Where do you see your career going where you want it to go? I just want to keep playing for bigger and bigger audiences. And I know that I, um, like years ago, I would say, I just want to play around the world. I want to play my music around the world. And you're already doing that. And no, I, I, that's, what's so beautiful or that I, I can say, yes, I, I know, like when you put your mind to something, 
and then you you do it it's like okay i know i've showed myself that i can do this and i think my whole music journey is just me showing myself i could do i can do it and like whatever the next step requires of me and it doesn't get easier necessarily with just uh, the different um challenges that come along with with um with the path but the the moments that affirm that um i'm i'm on the right path despite the challenges are really what i hold close and moments like on the 30 years tour was was so that was just such a beautiful affirmation of like what i always feel is is my mission really is just playing music and spreading joy and um having people leave a show happier than they came to it that's my intention every time i play well you know the important thing is networking that's how you get to those places that you just mentioned you don't network within you know when you go somewhere like that you might not have gotten into the be part of the 30th anniversary and and you're networking with thomas as well right yeah that's a good point like it's relationships really like exactly relationships and and making sure you keep them positive all the relationships that you have because that opens doors to other relationships around the world <laughs> yeah yeah it's true um <laughs> So how do people find out about you, Katie? Uh, my social media is Katie Henry Music. Um, my website, katiehenrymusic.com. Um, I think I use Instagram the most. So if anybody's just looking for following my journey, I, I would say hop on Instagram. But um, I have a mailing list sign up on my website too. And um, yeah, just like- katiehenrymusic.com, right? Yep. Not katiehenry.com, but katiehenrymusic.com. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what it's about. That's good. Um, one last question. You were talking about this, this last record that came out. Mm -hmm. How many songs you got ready for another record? Oh, good question. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of ideas in my voice memos to dive into, but I um any thoughts on what your next chapter you're gonna you think you're gonna be looking at as the next chapter oh i love the fact you said that because mm -hmm. you you said that each one of the records is an, is another chapter in your life yeah and and get going is this this current chapter so that's why i asked the question do you have any idea what the next chapter is going to look like at this point you might not but yeah no it's a good question though because it's like every chapter starts with this completely unknown like i'm in new territory and um yeah i just feel that way when each like album's released in the world it's like when i'm finished with it or like when the that really marks the finished of the recording process of like you're now sharing it with people so that to me kind of marks the beginning of the next chapter <laughs> so yeah i feel like i'm just living into it right now and that's always kind of embracing the unknown um the unknown territory but i do just feel like you know i'm growing as a person and just the new things that you the new perspectives that you have uh as you get older kind of come out in the music so i don't really know what it's going to be but i know that the things i've learned will continuously just process themselves out in the songs. And um, I'm trying to think of some of the voice memos that I have right now. I usually just have a little idea and title them. One of them right now is called Not Perfect. So we'll, we'll see what, if that becomes a- <laughs> That becomes your next chapter. chapter, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not perfect. Well, what I want to let you know is this. When I do rebroadcast our interview, I am going to play Get Going all the way through from tra beginning to end so people can listen to the record to hear you. Oh, that's so great. So you'll the, the my listening audience will get to hear the interview. And then right after the interview, I will play um, the entire record, the, your current record. Wow, that's cool. They'll get the full experience. They'll get the full experience and... 
before the interview, I'll play selected tracks from your other other albums that you've put out. Cool. Do you have a favorite? I'm gonna ask you questions. <laughs> Do I have a favorite? I okay. like your I like your first album a lot because it's yeah. kind of raw. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And it's not like the others because mm -hmm. you're moving more toward blues influence in the later records. Mm. It's not as bluesy, the first one. It's a little bit, but you can hear a lot of different things from your growing up, things that you listen that you were listening to growing up in your music. Yeah, no, that's a good point. The raw. Uh, right. Yeah. And the, the closer you started to get to listen to blues and play blues, the records are getting closer and closer, even better because you're understanding um, that genre of music better and, and adapting it to yourself, to how you play and what you want to, what you want to hear. Yeah, definitely. And I definitely think my, the way that I sing gets, um, uh more and more it, it's growing more and more but i think yeah. i've always had a, a, a blues leaning in my voice and the i like the raw sound of the first record because it's it is it's the first record basically it's your yeah. beginning yeah no that's cool i like to hear that uh, and i'll play something from that and i'll play something from the others as well and then right after the interview when we're done get going gonna go all the way through <laughs> thank you so much for supporting and, and getting the, the songs out in the world it means a lot yeah and when you come back you know how to get a hold of me you uh, you have my email if you come back in the area and you want to come on the show sometime let me know like like i did with laura it'd be great to have you yeah what um what venues nearby like if somebody is promoting a show that they have coming up. Jimmy's is close by, not too far from me, about half hour. Cool. The Bull Run in Shirley is another place that's close by. There's a bunch. Cool. Yeah, I haven't played Bull Run, but no, that's good. I think maybe in the fall, whenever I'm doing like a New England run, I also want to get back up to Maine. I played Paul, yep. Paul Benjamin, I'm sure you know. Yeah, uh, I know Paul. <laughs> And yeah, I played his club once and I Monday played... night club, right? The club yep, on exactly. Monday night. Yep. Exactly. I uh... You need to get in on his festival, the North Atlantic Blues Festival. Yeah, I think he does some things in Florida too, so Yep, he's got a festival there too. Yeah, it'll be good to to reconnect with him and also get what is those uh lobster well the lob <laughs> I definitely want to get lobster in Maine again. Um, yeah. There you go. There we go. <laughs> so anyway, Katie, thank you very much for taking some time out of your busy day and your, your career. And uh, I look forward to talking to you down the road if you're in the area and we can get you in, in, into the studio. Yeah, thanks for the, the thoughtful questions and just getting a, a moment to reflect on the whole thing. It, it means a lot. And um, I'll definitely how, let you know. How were the questions, by the way? I Yeah, I like thinking about... Like when I said the chapters thing, I'm like, yeah, but that's that's how I make sense of it. And it just it's cool to be able to talk about that. And, well, it's uh, part of your life. It's chapters in your life that you've you've experienced and now you're moving on to a new experience. How's that? Yeah, yeah. The music and and the way that life unfolds. I'm I'm just grateful that uh it unfolds alongside music. Otherwise I don't I don't know how it would make sense. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 you have it compartmentalized perfectly. Yeah, thanks. No, it's, I really enjoyed talking to you. It's a, it's a, um, for you, it's a time frame that you, where you're writing music, there's a time frame and everything fits into that one time frame. Then you move on to the next and move on to the next. Yeah. And like I said, it's always like unknown what the next is, but that's life, you know? It's, yeah, it's but a, you know, you. I, I'm going to say this to you. You know it's coming. You already know there's some, something there that you're moving forward to. You just don't know yet what it is going to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> yeah, and it's part of the like, uh, there's like fear and excitement in that, you know? It's well, like, did you ever imagine after the first record that you'd be going to Germany or you'd be you'd be traveling and getting on the the caravan at, after that? I, I would I wouldn't have believed that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's wild too because I do remember seeing like a radio chart uh, for High Road, and it was right next to a, a Roof Records release. And I remember think I remember asking the producer of the first album. Or no, I think he said, "Oh, that's so great that you know a self-released album is charting alongside an uh, album on Roof." And then I was like, "Oh, like what's?" That's when I really dived into Roof Records, and then I was like, "Oh, that would that would be great." And I, I just, yeah, I don't know. It's just funny how much it it came about, but I also visualized it. I also remember when um, Samantha Fish's album Black Howl and Wind, I think. Yeah. Yeah, when that came out, I remember uh, seeing it on iTunes, and um, I had seen her perform at this like local festival. Um, oh, I, I should have mentioned that before when you asked music growing up. I, I would go to this uh, crawfish fest. It was like near my house, and I got to see a lot of great bands uh, play there. And Samantha was just starting out, and so I was aware of her. And then I remember seeing her album. Um, on iTunes and I was like, oh, what is this? So I feel like that was actually the first time I was aware of Roof, but that was a while ago. And then when I released my first album, then I was, uh, you know, paying more attention to other albums released on Roof. So it was it was cool how it how it all kind of unfolded, you know. You must have been shocked when you found out you were going to be part of that. Yeah, I was like, you want me? What? No. <laughs> You sure? <laughs> but no, the timing was right. And I, I feel like, um, you know, with any relationship, it's, it's always the timing of it. And um, I, like I, I said, really like networking. It was networking. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was a really good point that you made, because sometimes it seems like it's so complicated. Like, oh, what is it? What is the... You could have, you know, you could be overseas and have one conversation with one person, and that person could take you somewhere else bring you that's, somewhere else. A hundred percent. That's what happened with the Croatia festival was like a conversation backstage. And one thing leads to the next I'm playing in Croatia. Like it was. <laughs> D didn't I just say that networking? Yeah. You were networking and it, you never imagined yeah. that by networking that you were going to end up, you know, you're playing in Europe and then now you're playing in Croatia. Wow. What? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's the perfect example. And, and it's wild to like, I know it's called networking, but in those moments, it's just, oh, I'm just enjoying a conversation with somebody who, who shares a similar interest as me, you know? Yeah, you never know where those <laughs> conversations are going to take you, though. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool to think about. And you'll be thinking about it now going forward as to, is this com what's this conversation going to end, end up? Where am I going to end up? <laughs> yeah. What I, I haven't been to Italy, so. No. Uh, <laughs> You might go to the blues cruises somewhere along the way too. Oh, I would, yeah, I really love that. I'm trying to make that happen, actually. Um, looking... Well, you have a lot of connections that have been on those cruises, so there you go. Yeah, I'm gonna start networking. Yep, I'm gonna keep on keeping on. But no, I I appreciate you, and this was really nice, nice to talk and connect and. I'm glad. I, you know, I've been trying to get a hold of you. I, I had sent you a whole bunch of emails and you, I figured you were really busy. So we went through Doug, your publicist, oh. and he was able to connect us, which was good. Oh, I'm glad he did. Yay. But now you have my email. Yes. And you can, anytime you need to communicate with me and network with me and promotions <laughs> when you come in locally, I'll do it. Cool. Thank you so much, John. I, I'm glad that today was the day. It happened. <laughs> yeah, it happened. So again, th Katie, thank you very much for taking some time. Yeah, no, likewise. And I'll, I'll definitely be in touch. And if you're around this week, you can listen. It's online. Oh, yeah. It'll be all week, all weekend. Streaming? No, it'll be, it'll be Saturday afternoon, okay. this Saturday afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern. I'll play the interview, this interview at 4 p.m. And then right after the interview, you get to hear your whole record play after it. 
Awesome. And if you I listen guess. earlier, before four o'clock, you hear some of your older records too. Cool. Thanks for playing it. I'm going to tune in for sure. All right. And it's www.wuml.org. Awesome. All right. Wrote it down. All right, John. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Thank you All so right. much. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Thanks.